Hey everyone, Carl Schilling again with you today. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of the Advocacy Network, and I want to share some things with you today because as we uh, commonly discuss, one of the greatest financial victimizations that we're facing today is the qualified defined benefit pension planning industry. Now, I'm going to show you some things today that go over that, but to date, we have saved our members and the public over $15 million that would have been directly lost to some form of scam, fraud, or predatory sales tactic. Now, this financial victimization I'm talking to you about historically is predatory sales tactics. But a little bit of due diligence and people could avoid all of these things, but very rare do people actually do any due diligence. They usually believe what they're told and I'm not knocking that, but people usually take for granted being told by a professional, whatever they tell them, they tend to believe it, okay? They don't do any homework or any background check on it. Now, I'm going to show you some things. As usual, we try to use full transparency here. We try to be totally transparent so that we can give you the facts, okay? Now, um, I'm going to show you directly from financial planning, okay? Financial planning. This is an industry uh, industry publication. Now it goes out to all financial advisors and it goes to uh, financial professionals and in it all over the place, it says not for public consumption. So they don't want the public to see these things. This is not written for the public. And you're not going to see this in money magazine. You're not going to see it in any of those areas because those, those publications, those financial publications for you, the public are really uh, funded by advertising from the Wall Street industry, from the mutual funds, from the uh, institutionalized money, all of those things, the wealth, uh, the wealth funding, those are all um, areas that are advertising, put in advertising dollars into those other publications. So that, of course, they'll never say a bad word about any of those promotions. Okay, but. In regulation and compliance, there's something that started in 2020 that was called regulation best interest. Now, that regulation best interest was to set a minimum standard for retail client care in financial advice. You are the retail, okay? Retail client, all right? So I'm going to read to you some of this, uh, some of what's going on, and you're going to be amazed, okay, at this. And again, information you'll never find anywhere but this goes to show you I, once again that there's a great financial victimization the 401k plans and these kinds of areas where we advise that you get out of okay well here we go do all brokerages and rias registered investment advisories have conflicts of interest well the sec answered with a definitive yes but it was with the caveat that the nature of conflict varies by factors like firms' business model. The regulator says that firms must prevent themselves or their financial advisors from placing their interests ahead of the clients. Wealth managers have an economic incentive to recommend product services or account types to provide more revenue or more benefits for the firm or its financial professionals even if such recommendations or advice are not in the best interest of the retail investor. In other words, they can make advice to you that may not totally be fully in your best interest and will have hidden fees and other things that you don't really know about, okay? Because they don't have to disclose it to you. Okay, this can create substantial conflicts of interest for both firms and financial professionals. So, what are the main examples of some conflicts of interest? Well, the SEC offered four types that would go against this reg uh, best interest, okay? Uh, payments and other benefits flowing among wealth and asset managers and their custodians based on a level of assets or business. In other words, some form of exchange of a fee from the custodian, which are the big banks, and the wealth managers who put your funds into those areas and they get back fees or some exchange for putting your funds with them, okay? Compensation for advisors, which is tied to quotas, bonuses, sales contests, special awards, or other types of incentives. 
You would never know about any of these things. Your financial advisor is not going to tell you that this month I have a contest with such and such mutual fund. And I'm going to get a cruise to the Bahamas if I do so, so much volume. And by the way, you're going to put me over the hump. Okay. They, they're not going to tell you that. Um, gifts, meal, gifts, meals, travel, and related benefits, including connection with the financial professionals' attendance at third party sponsored trainings and conferences. This is big. I was in the industry a long time, so I know this. You have to go to uh, every big mutual fund or the, the people who are trying to get you to sell their products always have big conferences, big training sessions, and they always get you pumped and promoted to sell their product. Okay, And by the way, these are the same products that are advertised in the money magazines and all the financial, uh, uh, the financial magazines. Okay. Um, pay link to sales or offers of proprietary products issued by the same firm recommending them. In other words, if a firm has a proprietary product that basically is, is tied to them, and then they have other products that are not proprietary, but they could sell, they will commonly sell the proprietary product before they sell the other one, regardless of how it benefits you. Certainly, if the proprietary product does not benefit you, they will still sell it to you. Okay. All right. Um, when do wealth managers have to eliminate conflicts of interest? Well, this is pretty interesting because you'd think always, but this is pretty specific, okay? Uh, the SEC supplied a couple of instances where the regulators say wealth managers must. This is must. The other times they don't have to, but this is the must, okay? Uh, must quash their conflicts. <clears throat> First, at times when an RIA, that's a registered investment advisor, client cannot provide informed consent because it is so difficult to provide full and fair disclosure of a conflict, okay? The firm should put an end to the practice according to the bulletin. So when they can't make something totally clear and transparent, they should not do it. <clears throat> they should put an end to that practice period, okay? Um, in addition, some conflicts such as pay programs, which we mentioned earlier, tied to quotas, benchmarks, and other performance metrics may make it impossible for a wealth manager to make recommendations in a client's best interest. Well, that's just common sense. With the more you have uh, alter, uh, uh, you know, ulterior motives, the more you have other uh, incentives and carrots, it, 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 it's just common sense that chances are you would try to find a way to put a square peg in a round hole because it's going to benefit you a little bit more, okay? Meaning the advisor, not you. So uh, in the staff's view, the greater the reward to the financial professional for meeting particular thresholds, or conversely, the more severe the consequence for failing to meet them, which is pretty uh, standard, the greater is the concern whether the incentive program complies with Reg BI and the IRA fiduciary standard, according to the bulletin. Now, according to the RIA fiduciary standard, the, the you, everything that happens is supposed to be in your best interest. Now, from my firm, the Advocacy Network, we do that. We do that. Your best interest is our only concern. But that fiduciary standard is what uh, is what separates supposedly the brokers and the investment advisors who put themselves up in this perch of perfection, and then they always knock the brokers down here, okay? Well, bottom line is both of them are outside the realm of best interest, but these guys up here are supposed to be at the highest possible standard, which is the fiduciary standard, which means they have got to act in your best interest in everything they do. Oh, let's be honest. It's impossible for them to do that and make a living. It's just impossible, okay? So lastly, we get to conflicts from advisor compensation. Uh, wealth managers may be required in certain situations to remove conflicts from their compensation of advisors uh, according to the guidance. Now, in, a, in a reviewing advisor pay, firms should examine whether their compensation encourages advisors to make recommendations that aren't in the client's best interest whether profits to the firm are passing along firm level conflicts to the advisors. Now, this is the key. Let me read it to you again. Whether pro profits to the firm are passing along firm level 
conflicts to the advisors. In other words, are the firms actually creating the lack of best interest and promoting it and forcing their advisors to do the same? because of restrictions that the firm puts on an advisor. And I could tell you the answer to that right now, after having been in, I won't name them, but I was in two of the big six. And I could tell you right now, the incentives and the push on advisors and keeping your job and staying with them is for you to follow the proprietary chain or you can see the door, okay? So, uh, whether other types of benefits such as trips and meals paid for by fund managers, uh, custodian or other third party creates conflicts. Well, of course it does. It's just common sense. Of course it does. So I just want to share this with you because, you know, uh, I'm always speaking to you from the uh, middle class millionaire plan. And I'm always describing to you why I believe that the middle class uh, needs to uh, uh, follow a different formula, okay? So uh, again, this is not just my opinion. I like to give the facts so that it's totally transparent so people don't think that I'm just giving out bad advice or I'm just you know using my own opinion on these things. These are facts, okay? These are facts straight from the SEC. And guess what? You're not going to see them because they're not going to be published anywhere where you can see them, all right? This is an industry journal, and it's talking to people in the industry and it's advising them on different things. So uh, uh, in, in closing, I just wanted you to know that, yes, we do believe at the uh, here at the, the Advocacy Network, we do believe without a doubt that one of the great financial victimizations are defined uh, contribution pension plans. Not defined benefit, there's very few defined benefits left. Those would be big corporations, the railroad the industry for the longest time has had one of those, but the uh, the defined benefits are hard to find and you don't really see them anymore, okay? Uh, there's nothing wrong with defined benefit uh, contribution plan because for the most part, um, you are not having to put much into that. Whoever you work for is, is supplying that for you, okay? So that's a wonderful employee benefit. Um, but a defined contribution plan, no. No, there's only there's only two winners in a combined, uh, the defined contribution plan, the 401k and these types of plans, IRAs, defined contribution. There's only two winners. One winner is the government. The government's your partner in this plan, and they're going to win. Ultimately, they win. The second winner are the people who provide the products. The investment vehicles and products that you're in are filled with fees, costs, and other things some are transparent. Some have to be transparent legally. You can open up your 401k plan and you can see some of the fees. But trust me, there's fees and costs <clears throat> that are not transparent that you don't even know about. And let's say that it all averages 3%. Let's just say 3%. Okay, so in a given year, you earn, uh, say, 7%, a good year, 7%. But you got a minus the three for the costs and the factors. So you, now you're down to four. And in the future taxation, you could be actually down to nothing in the future taxation because you don't know what those rates are going to be. Heck, those rates could be 50, 60, 70% again at some point. So what are you doing? Okay, now that doesn't even mention the year you go zero. If you go zero in your 401k, you still have the 3% costs and factors. That doesn't go away. So at that point, you're still negative three. And the next year, you still have to make up that three because you're going to have another minus three because every year you're going to have a minus three because of the costs and the factors. So again, I'm not trying to discourage the industry. I'm not trying to talk poorly about anybody else. I'm just telling you from a middle-class perspective, the middle-class has the same opportunity that the wealthy have. But the best way for them to do it is through a series of strategies, which we have put into the Middle Class Millionaire Plan, which starts with you increasing your income. Not paying down the debts and, and not trying to save more, increasing income by creating business opportunity, not changing what you do, not giving up your career, but based on whatever career you're in, 
chances are you're never going to be able to increase the income enough if you're in a fixed employee relationship, okay? If you're a business owner, that's a different story. You can increase your business 10, 20, 30, 40%. That's up to you. But even as an employee, you should have a business component. And that's where your 401k dollars can be used and show you how to do that. And then we also show you how to create an infinite bank, which is fixed, guaranteed, creates tax-free liquidity. It creates tax-free income and it creates generational wealth. And oh, by the way, it also creates the ability for liquidity for you if you are critically ill, chronic illness, or terminally ill. And those dollars can be above and beyond whatever it is you have in your medical insurance. And there's costs in there. So obviously the ability to, to, to alleviate, and mitigate those costs is another very big positive in life, okay? So there you have it. I just wanted you to see it for the facts. That's what they call regulation best interest. That's what's supposed to be protecting you. And as you can see, it is not much protection. So look, go to the advocacynet.com, the T-H-E, advocacynet.com. Download the Middle Class Millionaire plan and just read it. Just read it. See if it makes sense. If it makes sense, let's have a consultation. I'd be glad to speak to you one-on-one -on -one right here on Zoom, just like this, just like we're talking right now. Talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, show you particularly for your specific scenario what the strategy looks like, how we can get you out of your 401k with no taxes and no penalties, how we can get you structured into business that can create additional tax-advantaged income, and how we can create tax-free liquidity and tax-free income for your retirement or whatever purposes you want it for. These, this can all be done for you in a very, very strategic manner, which is going to allow you to be doing the same thing that the wealthy have done for decades and decades and decades, hundreds of years, actually. So get the book, read the book. If you're interested, the same page where you download the book, I have a calendar. You can create a consultation. If you uh, 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 create a consultation with me, first thing I do for you, you get a free membership in the Advocacy Network. That's $195 value. And I will also provide for you the award-winning financial transformation, uh, which is a financial literacy course combined with uh, some self-development concepts. And that is a $395 value. And I will provide that for you too. Complimentary, just for sitting and having the consultation. Again, I'm Carl Schilling. Thanks so much for your time. I hope this has been helpful.